Hello guys and welcome back to our last and final essential standard. Standard three is 5.7D retail paraphrase and summarize. Okay, so today we're going to be summarizing using the plot line. Um, when you summarize using the plot line, you are usually summarizing a fictional text. So this wouldn't apply to um, it wouldn't apply to nonfiction text. It would mostly apply to if you're reading um, um, something for entertainment, or you could even summarize um, a movie or a cartoon. Um, usually, all of a, a drama, a play, followed the structure of a plot line. Okay, so a plot line is a simple way to outline a short story or a novel. Again, this could also apply to a movie or a cartoon. Okay. So think of the plot line as a roller coaster. With every twist and turn, the story and the characters can change. So... The first part of the plot line is the exposition. This is the beginning of a story where the reader meets the character and learns the setting, time, and place. So this is at the bottom of the roller coaster. Okay, you have not gotten up yet. You are at the bottom, ready for takeoff. Okay, and then slowly you start going up to your um, rising action. The story moves on. The problem begins to build. The problem has not started yet. Tension builds as the protagonist struggles with an ever-increasing problem. Things are looking pretty bad. And another uh, word for protagonist is the main character. Because you always want to highlight the main characters, okay? So something's about to happen. And you know, when you're going up a roller coaster, you know something's coming up ahead and you're just waiting for it to happen. Next, once the problem is learned, it tends to get more difficult. This is the climax of the story. This one, you are at the top and you will know, whoa, I... I'm at the top and something's about to happen. You might twist, you might get reversed, you might get upside down. And this is a major uh-oh issue. And that's called the climax, guys. That climax is a fancy word for the problem. Okay? So then it, it, when it seems that there's no way out of the situation, the protagonist makes a decision about what he or she is going to do about the problem. This is usually the most intense part of the story. So the problem has not been resolved yet. However, the character starts thinking, yeah, I have a problem and I need to figure this out. The resolution the reader has a pretty clear idea about what has happened and the problem is usually fixed or solved or resolved. So, does that mean that the story is over? No. A lot of students usually get confused between the resolution and the conclusion, but the conclusion means that you have gone, you have faced the problem, you have resolved the problem, and now the story can finally end which is known as the conclusion. So we still have a conclusion. The conclusion is how the story ends. The story does not end when the problem is resolved. If there are details after the resolution, then that is your conclusion. Okay? Okay, and then um, not all stories have a conclusion. Sometimes novels or a series in a movie will leave cliffhangers and that will require for you to read the next chapter and to figure out what is coming up ahead. Mm 
Okay. So, of course, I'm going to show you a vocabulary. And um, while you are watching this vocabulary, guys, you can take out um, this uh, worksheet that you have in your um, in your packet and kind of fill in some of the main definitions. Summary. Okay. So go ahead and watch this video. Oh, you already know it's the flow cab crew. What? It's a song about summarizing. Where? Brooklyn. Why? For so when? Right now. The reason it's helpful to summarize a text Why? is to tell someone the gist and so you don't forget. But only relevant facts in the summary. That means important in case you were wondering. But don't make your summary too short. That leaves us asking questions and wanting more. Like, let's say you read the BFG. Your summary is about a girl named Sophie and a giant. I like it a lot, but you can't mention anything about the plot. That summary is missing critical facts. You said you liked it. We don't need to know that. Say that. But that's not the only way that you can go wrong. Sometimes summaries are way too long. Only key events and main ideas should be in it. So cut out any extra info to win it. If you read an article on greenhouse gases, I don't need to know that the interview will work. Classes when summarizing five things will get you by who, what, when, where, and why. Like, who is Sophie? What happens what? in the story? When does when? it happen? Today or 1940? Where does when? it take place? You gotta set the scene. And why is the ah. book called the BFG? These are called the five W's. And when you summarize, they are something that you should use. And remember, it's just the facts, ma'am. So drop anything else in the trash can. A summary is a short explanation with just the important information. When you summarize, make it simple. Cut out the details and keep what's essential. A summary is a short explanation with just the important information. When you summarize, make it simple. Cut the details and keep what's essential. You know what a summary is now. Wanna write one? Yeah. Well, here's how. Okay. You code while you read. Yeah. Then write it up. I'll explain all that before our time is up. First up, coding. What does it mean? Hmm. Coding's marking the text while you read. Oh. Use symbols to mark important facts. Like a check mark to say, I already knew that. Reread any section that troubles you and look for info on the five double jokes. As you read the second time, take good notes. Write down the information that stands out most, like who, what, when, where, and why. Now that you read the text, it's time to summarize. Organize your notes and gather your thoughts so that you're ready like a real boss. Recap what you read in your own words. Use complete sentences and those key terms. Once you write the summary, review and revise. Remove your opinions and keep it concise. You can summarize anything you read or watch. A short movie or a book about our need for socks. If they need reviews, you'll see summaries a lot. Sticking to main ideas and the plot. A summary is a short explanation. With just the important information, when you summarize, make it simple. Cut out the details and keep what's essential. A summary is a short explanation. With just the important information, when you summarize, make it simple. Cut the details and what keep essential. what's essential. Okay, guys, so whenever you summarize, you only keep what is essential. That means these 
few items are the only thing that should be in a summary. Sometimes students want to say, um, oh, Johnny and his friends were going to the store. Okay, Johnny and his friends are the main characters, but then what happens is that all these extra details are thrown in there like, Johnny and his friends are going to the store and he was wearing a red shirt and he had some new shoes on and he was and his friend was wearing a purple shirt. Um, are those details important? Not really. So stick to the main details. Okay, so what I want you to do is you are going to use um, this five elements of a story vocabulary card assignment. It is a flow vocabulary assignment. So what you're going to do is um, you're going to fill in the meaning of the five main elements. So an action is or the events in a story or a plot. The story had a ton of action. There was one event after the next throughout the whole book. So you're going to use this word in a sentence and give an example to show that you understand the meaning. So if an action means that um, there was one event after another after another, what does that mean to you? We've already given you an example. What does that mean to you? You write it right here. I'm thinking that an action is, and write it in, okay? Then you're gonna draw an example of it, okay? And then you're going to do the same with each part. A character is a person, usually in a work of art. And a work of art, guys, is a, is a fancy word for a story. Um, somebody, a character that is in a story. Okay? So you're going to write down what you think the word character means here. And then you're going to draw an illustration of um, just what you're thinking. Okay? And you're going to go through each word and you're going to do the same thing. Um, you can use colors, use markers, guys. These vocabulary words are here to help you to better understand um, what you are reading. Okay, and then lastly, um, you are going to continue the day the Roulettes got Moxie back. And what you're going to do today or this week for this is you should have finished reading all the whole entire story by now. So I want you to think about the five key elements of the story. What, what were the five main things that happened in the story? And if you have not filled in this part yet, this is a perfect time for you to also use it once more and fill in the sections of the story. So, for example, the main characters were, and you would, you know, fill it in. Or you can get a, a clean sheet of paper, guys, and you can draw the plot line on your own. And then fill it in since it's blank. Okay. Um, and then just fill in the main events. What was the problem? How was the problem resolved? And how did it conclude? So that's what I want you to do. I want you to summarize the day the Roulettes got mox their moxie back. All right. And then your last and final assessment is um, let me find it. Your last and final assessment is um, your study island assessment. And you have learned a lot these past few weeks. Um, so I want you to try your best. I want you to use all your skills that you have learned. You have all these videos to help you if you need to go back and rewatch. Okay, so these are different um, examples of when you would have to summarize. So right here, you are summarizing a drama, which is a play. Even though it's a play, guys, you still have to be able to identify those five key elements, okay? Um, 
And then here's an example of another summary. Um, one strategy that I tell my students is when you're summarizing, they're asking, all of these questions are asking you to summarize the story. Okay, so as you're reading, I want you to read each little sentence. And if you feel like it's a key detail, like it's really important to the rest of the story, put a little check on it. If you think, um, no, um, that that piece of uh, detail is not important. Remember the, the example I gave you about the friend wearing a red shirt and the friend wearing a purple shirt? If it's not an important detail, cross it out. And this isn't, don't, do not copy mine, guys. I'm just giving you some examples. Okay, so then if you go to B and you're like, yeah, that was a really important detail, or yeah, that was an important detail. Oh, yep, we can't ignore that detail. Then you'll clearly see which one is the best answer. Okay, so I'd like to see some strategies in there, guys, to prove your answers. Don't just go and um, choose A, get in there, really tear up the answer choices, and um, and if you can, support it with some text evidence. All right, guys, so it has been a very um, adventurous uh, few weeks with you guys. I hope that you learned a lot. I hope that um, you enjoy the rest of your summer and um, and you learned a lot because that's why you know we're here we're here to work together so again um these next few days if you have any questions go ahead and comment in the google classroom or have your parent email me um, i am happy to help you in any way that i can so um it was good working with you guys and being your teacher bye